now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and today I'm joined by my buddy Mitchell. Uh, I think Kevin is still flying, trying to get back from Japan, his awesome vacation. I know his sleep schedule is probably all messed up. And Alistair is, who, know where, who knows where he is, doing college stuff, doing gaming stuff, uh, you know, maybe trying trying to work his way to getting pro. I don't know, but he's with us in spirit and so is Kevin. Uh, but Mitchell is here and I'm here and here. Mitchell is awake. He's awake somehow at like yeah. 530 in the morning in his time. And it's early for me yes. too. <laughs> hey man weird weird gaming hours right so uh hey, i was actually it, gaming all night yes <laughs> i was yeah, there you go i was guilty <laughs> that's great man that's awesome yeah. uh well it's been a while for me i think i missed uh, an episode or two so uh, i just want to catch up man How, how's life going how are things with you it's good uh it was actually recently my birthday uh like that's a few right. days ago oh, yeah old you man. wish me happy, happy birthday. birthday thank yep. you yeah yeah <laughs> You know, I still am at that age where I guess I get family money. So I got some family to send me some money. It was pretty cool. Yes, sir. I bought a PS5 on it that was like on a Costco deal. So nice. It was pretty cool. It's very nice. It's like way better graphics than my laptop. So <laughs> yeah, yeah for stuff. sure. What uh, what game you've been playing on there? Uh, Spider Man Two. Yeah, I got nice. Spider Man Two and I got God of War. Both pretty fun. Pretty fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, PS5s are pretty sweet. Uh, I just, I, it's been so long since I played console games that, yeah. uh, and well, I take that back. It's been so long that since I played any game besides League, <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it's it's been a while. That'd be a good switch up for me. But uh, yeah, man, uh, Worlds going on, it's continuing to truck through. Uh, I just have to say this before we start anything, before I even get your initial thoughts. Everything. Okay. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right here, right now. Declare yeah. it. Really proud. NA is better than EU, man. I would just oh, say yeah, it. We're, so we're in there. NA you know what I'm saying? Better. Hey, it doesn't matter <laughs> who got eliminated. We're the last one standing out of uh, the Western regions. And so I am excited about that. I just had to get that out there. But now let me get your initial thoughts of this past week's uh, action, man. What are your thoughts? I mean, that's like the main thing I'm interested <laughs> about. That was yeah. the coolest part of the whole week. I was, it was like, it was a few days, it was two days before my birthday, but it was like the perfect birthday present. I could just mm. feel like the, the NA pride, like kind of just keep going throughout my days. It, it was good. It was like, I watched it live too. It was cathartic, you know, watching energy yeah. just completely poop on G2. Um, it was like a stomping, like it wasn't just like a stomping in that like super one-sided G2 is just like dying. It was like, contracts was like insane. Yeah. Plans, dude. The flash, uh, the J4 flag flash was like mm -hmm. so clean every time. It's like this guy doesn't miss. So I'm impressed. I don't know. It was yeah. awesome. Well, I, I got to ask you, uh, like, be honest. Like, did you think NRG no. was going to make it this far? Zero percent. I did <laughs> not think so. No, I think that's why that actually happened, because I really yeah. did not believe it. Um, I, I don't think anybody else believed it either. Um, if you did you uh, hear Dokla's interview that he gave after the games? No, okay, what it was really funny. He was basically like, um, yeah, you know, we play way better on stage than we do in scrims. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, I actually think those are the first times we beat G2 ever. Wow. They had not beaten them in scrims. Like, they just... <laughs> so, yeah. to be they got their first two games against them uh, just on stage. Uh, pretty sure everyone internally, like... So, this is a kind of idea, right, where, like, everybody knows who the, like eventual winner of like a regional championship before they win in scrims mm -hmm. energy was the same back at home too they were winning like 30 percent of their scrims like no one thought yeah. they were going to win and they won the title so they're just like a really weird special team super counter logic like yeah they really are they <laughs> yeah, really live up so to random. that name like even on the international stage because even when you know we did like the preview show and all that stuff i and what's crazy is they were our number one team right yeah so it, it kind of hyped. is almost yeah it's almost like disrespectful for most of the people like i mean at least my sentiment was that they weren't going to get far i actually put more stock into team liquid and more stock yeah. into cloud nine that was a uh, mistake huh yeah. that was a big mistake <laughs> i mean and even i know golden guardians was on the the downtrend but 
I mean, I know we both had high hopes for Golden Guardians, and that was just uh, didn't p- pan out. But again, like energy coming in with the uh, the counter logic, carrying that tradition on. But and that's why I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to give them too much praise. We'll dive into the games, but I want to give them too much praise no, because yeah. I we gotta... genuinely believe they fluked their way into it because, like, they had they right. said they had like around a ten percent win rate in scrims in total. So, like. It's not only they hadn't beat G2, they're just not beating anybody in any of their games. So yeah. I'm just really surprised. Yeah, I don't want to give them any credit. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say, really. It's just kind of a funny phenomenon. Like, if you look at the predictions, right, for a bunch of the yeah. analysts, it was like 16 to like 2 or something ridiculous where everybody predicted G2. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know what else to say about that. It's just we, we can just be amazed and just sitting here in amazement yeah it was great yeah. <laughs> and i mean when you talk about kind of fluking your way in too like again like they've only played one eastern team uh, yeah. throughout this whole swiss stage they weibo, they, yeah. they played against weibo gaming and lost and coincidentally enough they're playing them they're matched up with them they got the best uh, draw they are by yeah. far the easiest eastern team in the knockout stage i was like right. wondering if like Oh, who are we gonna get? We're gonna get it instantly eliminated, and then realizing, hey, this one's actually doable. But right, they're still probably gonna lose. But yeah, you know. they should still lose because they <laughs> lost earlier. So that's what I'm going with, right? That's yeah. uh, that's what I'm going with. But no, I mean, again, like they they played Team Liquid, and then they played Mad Lions, and then G2, and they've been winning. They're four and one, right? So, yeah. so pretty Not impressive bad. up to this point. Yeah, they're four and one. They've only dropped one game, like I said, to, to Weibo. So they've been actually playing well. Um, I do want to dive in a little bit. Let's go ahead and just start there, you know, yeah. with that series against G2. And just in general, um, I remember last podcast, you were talking about the Senna Tom Kench pick, right? Oh, and yeah. how yeah, yeah. it was a little interesting, right? Because you're like, nobody's going to pick that. It was one of the things they picked. And, you know, to be fair, like, I guess they had, like, people have been kind of scrimming it. So yeah. there was some stuff behind the scenes that we didn't know. But it actually has seemed to to catch some steam and i was looking into it a little bit more and it makes sense in a lot of ways especially in this meta because you know with adc so heavily focused um having a tom kench just free like uh invulnerability where he could just eat you yeah makes such a uh, and he's engaged and he's a tank so there's so many like good qualities of tom kench um that that makes sense because i think they played tom kench uh the next game but with like a jinx or something or uh sivir was it sivir right they played i believe t1 i'm sorry it was sivir it was yeah it was t1 yeah so but i just having the tom kench in general as a pick like to me seems to make a lot of sense but yeah what did you think about that what did you think about their drafts in general because uh you know i was Uh, happy with it and i thought it was pretty Pretty, no, pretty I thought good. it was really cool. Um, I definitely think the Senna TK is going to take over at least a good chunk of the meta, because uh, mm. it's being, it was being picked really to punish Kaisa like super hard, right? Because uh, you bully the crap out of Kaisa, and um, Tom Kench is like a soft counter to Kaisa, and that Kaisa is very single target focus, and you know Tom mm. Kench can kind of stop that. And also, Kaisa just can't kill Tom Kench because one of the things about him is. He's, like, so unbelievably strong in the early game. Like, crazy yeah. tanky, like, a ton of damage, uh, and he farms. So he gets, like, really steamrolled ahead. Uh, Sending DK is, like, a snowball comp. You have to get ahead with it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's surprisingly consistent. Um, I forgot. I didn't realize it was on this patch. Um, but the the world's patch is Senna has, like, bonus crit da- or un nerfed crit damage when you go yeah, full crit right. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you're seeing like the Storm Razor build and I think it's pretty good probably. I don't really understand the numbers on Senna's kit really, but uh, it seems to do damage. So um, yeah. I, if T1 pulled it out the next day, I mean, I wouldn't be like, I, okay, so yes, it's being played in scrims, but like Energy kind of said, hey, we're going to actually play Senna TK on stage and then win with it. And you see immediately T1 do it and realize mm-hmm. that, oh shit, yeah, this is going to be it's in the strong. meta. This is going to be played again. Yeah. Uh, you can't blind pick Kaisa. You might even have trouble doing some Zaya lanes. If you do like Zaya and like a melee support like Nautilus or something, you can get bullied really hard with Senna DK. You can get poked mm-hmm. and like you can get like ultied and stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. You know, Energy kind of doing an old CLG thing back in MSI 2015 where they like yeah. reinvented the bot lane meta with a completely new pick. Um, so. 
pretty wild stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, like just going to the, the and again, the more I'm thinking about it, it the most broken thing in pro uh, gaming has always been the ability to be invulnerable. And I think like you've you've really seen that on display here. I mean, that's why Zaya is such a high priority because she yeah. has her R, right? There's yeah. um, there's always ways, especially as an ADC, your your biggest damage threat usually is is something, someone that you want to keep alive as long as possible in these team fights. And you can kind of get away with mispositioning a little bit if you have a, a great um, support to, to be able to make you vulnerable. It doesn't vulnerable. turn so, into mispositioning. It turns into like aggressive, positive positioning. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, I could definitely I mean, see a team like, like JDG, like with Ruler playing something exactly. like this. Like I could yeah. see some... Now that people know it's possible, we can see some weird stuff now. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the same reason why Callista, even though it hasn't had such a big success, it's had a high presence. I mean, yeah. because even though she doesn't get involved, she can make her support invulnerable. She's still broken, uh, yep. <laughs> and she's still broken. So yeah. I think you're right. Like, that, this is definitely taking a big priority, especially in the bot lane, this ability to to kind of dodge critical things because there's there is a lot of combos out there that well, if you get locked down you're just dead oh, like yeah. I mean, nico like, being so prevalent yeah, Vi, you know, you know Vi, it's just jarvin Malkai. it's just yep. everything Maokai. there's just yep. things that if you get caught you're you're done uh yep. or jacks even getting in there if he stuns you you're dead um so it is pretty interesting and i love that we're you know we're looked at at least on stage that we were the ones that kind of started that this we, this we chose to do it i think everybody yeah. heard about it but we definitely chose to do it and said hey yeah it's pretty good like it it yeah. poops on bot lanes hard and they bully so. with it and then fbi is a center player he's been playing center for years yeah. uh yeah. like kind of known for it domestically so i'm pretty i'm pretty hyped about it i'm like i will say watching guma play it though was pretty dang was, sick as well that was terrifying yeah that's a terrifying thing to see someone I mean, uh oh on tom kench he was like predicting so bin good. yeah the licks and the w's like he, so good like i mean that's scary that is good it's really strong that means they've been practicing it too yeah. i mean i would be surprised if t1 and energy scrimmed each other and picked mm. this up with each other and just decide to roll with it because definitely at some point someone blighted kaisa Senate got Senna TK'd and was like, oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah. Uh, same with Callista, too. I don't even know if people should be banning Callista if you can opt into Senna TK because yeah. that does not look like a fun lane. You just get poked forever and you die. So For sure. pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. Gonna, gonna change the knockout meta. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit uh, about contracts in Dokla. Okay. Because okay. sure. Do first of all, Dokla has never been you know, at least in the LCS, like the top laner, we're like, he's going to carry or he's going to, yeah. we're going to play through him. Right. And yeah. he did freaking amazing on Cassante and rumble, you know, uh, and rumble. he didn't even, yeah. yeah, he didn't even, well, he didn't even take the ignite, you know, where everybody says you got to take ignite rumble sure. top. They still did well, but honestly, like I, I know contracts had a lot to do with that. Contracts was freaking everywhere. This man is a monster right now. I don't know what, is going on with him but he just played I, amazing so talk about yeah. those those two real quick yeah well i mean i don't know contracts kind of had one of the most insane jungle performances that any jungler has had internationally no pretty nuts um because it's like we have to take into account that this was g2 that was considered like actually uh, a top tier team kind of like maybe mm -hmm. not top three ish but once you go top four to like top six like g2 was considered able to beat Weibo Gaming, able to beat, uh, you know, Damwon stuff, like, able to beat Asian teams. Yeah. And Contracts totally just took over the entire game. I thought it was, I don't know, kind of an insane jungle carry. I, I do have to say that, like, I felt like Yike maybe was collapsing a bit under the pressure. He felt a little, um, maybe not responsive. I heard maybe some of the members of G2 were sick. I wasn't sure which ones, but oh, right. that, that could have played in, a part into it, because... It felt like Contracts just did not care. He just every play he made works, and oh, the, yeah. some of the synergies he had with um, Ignar were really cool too. Like he must have been saying in comms, "Hey, I'm going to EQ flash on this guy," mm -hmm. and then Ignar was like right there to jump on them and finish kill chain CC. It was, it was really impressive. I also think Dokla is like one of the best rumbles that we've seen. Like his ultis are always really good. Um, yeah. I think the other good rumbles are like the shy and uh, and. Uh, Zeus are the other mm -hmm. two good rumbles, but like for the most part, Dokla's rumble ultis have always been really insane. So I'm pretty stoked by these these players. Yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, and I think too, um, what's crazy is going to G2 and talking about scrims and stuff. I think I saw uh, 
that they were like undefeated or had a really good win rate against Asian teams. Oh yeah, um, they, they in were scrims, like, yeah, positive against right? Chinese teams for like the first time <laughs> yeah. ever or something like that. Yeah. But they forgot about us, you know yeah, what I'm saying? They forgot, they forgot about, about us. us. So we were supposed that's to be pretty the free fun. win for them, you know? Exactly. Like, it's a, it might have been one of those things where you're like, you know, you over prepare and you you look ahead too far and yeah. you forget what's right in front of you and you don't 100%. you don't really you don't prepare I've, for I've, that. So I really feel like they showed up on the day thinking that we were a free win. Like five minutes into the first game we started going, they're like Wait a second, guys. We're not yeah. prepared. And they just could not get it up. They're like, oh, God. we Oh, it's game two. Oh, we're still losing. Oh, no. Because, like, yeah. we didn't even talk about Pal Fox. Pal Fox was, like, I the know. best Talia in the tournament by He's far. really good. Like, uh, we, you know, he got memed on because Yahoo called him a powerful genius mid laner or whatever. And then proceeded to just completely poop on him in the game one. Yeah. Um, but I actually am starting to see it. This guy is a genius. Like, the over-the-wall stuff, he's just got some clever positioning, like, sneaky, I don't know, hit-you-from-afar stuff. Like, so, Pal Fox was pretty pretty impressive. I don't know. This, I def- I, we yeah. should stop talking of them up so much, honestly. <laughs> uh, you're right. We're getting to that level where we might need to dial it back a bit. But last thing yeah. I'll say on, on Pal Fox is that I do think he's been uh, – imp- like upping his game as the tournament has gone on. Like we're starting yeah. to see some, I mean, even in his Nico had some really good uh, engages. Um, so, I mean, overall it, it's, it, it's a good sign, but let's just keep it real. Like they lost a Weibo earlier, so they don't have a chance uh, winning. <laughs> they're done. They're done yeah. in quarters is, is pretty much what's going to happen. Probably. But, I mean, but, realistically, Weibo is also one of those teams that like also is like an underestimated type I definitely mm-hmm. feel like Weibo and what BLG in their last matches, they went yeah. to three games versus Fnatic and G2, right? But right. and it was pretty close too. But I do feel like Weibo and BLG were not taking them as seriously as they were because Weibo yeah. um, beat KT pretty impressively. They're not a yeah. bad team at all. I think Weibo is a decent team, mm-hmm. and they almost lost to Fnatic. So you know, I think they'll kick it up in quarters. Honestly, they have the ability yeah. to take their opponents seriously and kick it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll uh, is there any any last things you want to say about the the matchup between NRG and G two? Uh, you you, I mean, you good with that? It's I celebration, mean, but yeah, celebration <laughs> for G two. Like, I I don't know. I guess Dokla's the best Western in the top. He just did not have a problem with Broken Blade at all. Broken Blade had a really all. bad tournament. Uh, he had a really yeah. he had a great year, I think, up until Worlds, and then he had good first two games against the Asian team and just real bad performances. Genji was bad. Energy was bad. Uh, this last one against BLG was really bad. Oh my god, man! Rough times for yeah. BB. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we say uh, let's go to our other NA team that did not make it. Uh, C9. Uh, uh, any I thoughts read. on oh my any god. thoughts on them? This is this is the the RIP Bro. swan song for them. Yeah, we uh, got lo- losing two one to to Fnatic. Uh, not. It's crazy because uh, they were. I don't know. I don't know what to say because they were stomping so hard uh, the game that they won, but then had a hard time closing it. And Dude. I don't know if that took a mental toll on them because after that, it was just all downhill. So uh, give me your thoughts on C9 Fnatic, uh, that that matchup. Dude, That okay, the first game was really painful. They were playing super scared and were just super risk adverse. They were so monstrously ahead. Like, it, mm-hmm. you, you just look directly to energy. They had that exact same comp with that kind of lead. That game is mm-hmm. over. Like, that game is done. Uh, so, that was pretty rough to watch. I wouldn't... I, I don't know. I, okay, I have a sneaking theory that a lot of members might have gotten sick or something. Or were not really? focused or playing well. Because, um, like, I don't know. I, I'm just hearing a bunch of teams popping up and saying that they got sick. And then, I you know... These teams kind of mingle and hang out and are friends, right? Berserkers friends with people on T1 or whatever. Like, yeah. so who knows? But like, I definitely think Berserker had a really bad tournament, and mm. I I kind of feel like he had a good game one in that he was unkillable really well, and then he just started playing bad. Like he got tired, I think weirdly. Like mm. maybe he was sick. He got tired of sleep because as soon as game two hits, he starts playing. I noticed he looking a little sluggish. He's looking a little awkward missing some cs getting hit by stuff not flashing so i don't know that's yeah, i game maybe. one they dragged it out and they got tired or something <laughs> what's what's crazy to me too is that in game one they had 
uh, the Rumble vs. Jax matchup in which Fudge absolutely destroyed uh, that matchup. And that was a big win condition for them. But then in Game yeah. 3, they played the reverse matchup where he was Jax and they played against Rumble. And I'm just like, I, for, for yeah. me, that was already like a big question mark. I Once that happened, I didn't have a lot of hope already uh, for the game. And it just was ugly to watch, man. What, what, did, what did you think they were thinking? What, what's up with those drafts? And him playing Renekton too? Oh, gosh. Like, I don't know. Yeah, the draft was rough. I mean, they just it just seemed like they just defaulted to whatever meta stuff. They didn't really yeah, think yeah. about it. They just went down the checklist to what the next yeah. best thing in the meta was. I don't really know. Um, I mean, I mean, the Jackson's a rumble thing is just notoriously terrible. I, I, everyone yeah. knows that. Everyone says it. It's not a surprise. It, it went really badly for Fudge literally the last time he, he tried it against LNG, right? Or no, it was yeah. uh, T1, T1. Um, he got destroyed in that one. I also think like the first pick, Zaya, is being heavily punished, right? They first pick Zaya, they instantly went Rumble J4, and it's just like, uh, well, we're 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 pretty aft guys. <laughs> that looks yeah. super miserable. Um, so I mean Oscar Nin could not play Rumble. He was a really bad Rumble, but it did not matter because the combo is too strong with the uh, yeah. J4 Rumble. So I, agree. I mean yeah, I think it's just that the uh, C9 was just not very adaptive. I think they were really behind the meta. Uh they were behind like what like they, they knew what the first meta was really well i think um but as the tournament progressed the meta changed and i think teams started to realize that like putting a high priority on desire is not that strong when there's a rumble and there's a, a j4 round and you know a couple of variety of other champions uh yeah zaya does get hard countered by some of that stuff you know i'm surprised mm -hmm. we haven't seen gangplank yet gangplank is a hard zaya <laughs> counter too and has good matchups into jacks so yeah, um, I think there's still a lot of things that we can do to stop the, the Zaya. But, I mean, to talk about Game 3, I feel like uh, Eminez picking LeBlanc in, like, your elimination match final game. That's a comfort she, pick. That's it a is, comfort but she pick. just got nerfed so hard yeah. on the patch. I felt like it was such a bad idea. As soon as I saw it, and then they picked Silas, I was like, oh, it is so doomed. Like, Eminez, he's going to get a bunch of CS, he's going to poke you down, he's going to get some plates, and then Silas is just going to, like, run you over in team fights and just yeah. completely outscale you. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, he couldn't get kill anybody. I mean, he got one kill the whole game, so yeah, pretty rough. What do you think What do you think about Blabber? Because Blabber's always gotten a lot of flack for his international performance. I think even in the beginning of the tournament, I, I don't know if it was Kobe or somebody – one of the casters was saying it was talking about that and they were like, you know, he had they had won or made a good play. And they were like, he definitely doesn't deserve that title. Uh, and I'm like looking oh. at you know, like the as far as like the title of not performing well in international tournaments. And to well, me, I mean, I, you know. it was still not looking good for me for Blabber. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know, man. I think he does still kind of deserve that meme or that title or the criticism, whatever you want to call it, because yeah. It's just not there. But what, do you have any thoughts on him? Like, what would what, you think about him? What, what do you think he may need to do to to find success internationally? Because it just hasn't happened. I think it's uh, it's got to be a mentality thing. I do see a clear difference between Blabber's quality of just mechanics in general, and it's like I feel like when you play this game long enough and you view it long enough, you can kind of tell when a player starts panicking. And they start mm. kind of playing like irrationally. Like Fudge just was super obvious in that um that game three, right? Like instead of like going home and then TPing, you just TP straight to the fight and had no mana, and it made a big difference. You couldn't press any of his abilities in the fight. I feel like Blabber has a lot of these moments where he just panics, isn't thinking. He kind of autopilots for like maybe thirty seconds, and then mm -hmm. kind of realizes like there's a couple, there's a bunch of times where like C9s like they're just like trying to like really get this Rift Herald, and they drop everything to get it. And then they just lose their terrors mid and look bot and they get surrounded. Like, I think it's a nerfs thing. I don't know. I do think that, like, Blabber has problems with choking and nerfs. I think he always has for years. Mm. And it took him a while to get him over uh, to win domestically because he made mm -hmm. so many domestic finals and didn't actually get titles. Uh, and it's only recently he started winning things on C9, like, in the last year right. or two. So... I he mean, might be I, the he might be the Bjergsen the Bjergsen thing like a little bit successful I mean, domestically not nothing internationally I don't know 
I, I kind of think so. I actually think that about a lot of the players on C9 a little bit. Mm. I, you know, Fudge is, I think, just kind of like always been mediocre, except maybe his first year. But Blabber mm. and Zven are both players that have very iconic moments of like choking in really big scenarios like yeah. sven's been doing it longer than blabber has been mm-hmm. Sven was on that uh what 2017 roster and g2 where they were like stopping scrims and saying everyone was saying they're gonna make it out of groups oh hey it just like happened this year uh yeah. and they yeah. didn't make it out of groups Sven like made a bunch of really bad mistakes uh in the group stage to not make it out and then they got kicked out of g2 went to na and then they were just choking like crazy on TSM and Sven and Mithy combo, right? Like, okay, if we're going to really dive deep and talk about Cloud9. Yeah, go ahead. I yeah. do think the problem is it's Sven and Mithy. Sven and Mithy have literally never actually had um, good international success. They've had one MSI finals mm-hmm. on G2 with perks. And they have been playing League of Legends since like 2015, 2016. Yeah. Always been the best domestically super terrible internationally like they just bomb it all all the time um i don't know it might be a zven like zven and, and mithy are like mithy is a coach right now i get it and mm-hmm. zven's a, a player but zven had such a terrible tournament i felt like like really bad support play yeah. really silly stuff like just getting caught over and over key moments when you don't need to um sitting in a bush you know, for like oh, two yeah. minutes straight for the yeah. biggest flank ever to just recall anyways. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, silly. That's so just, silly. I feel like it's just, uh, it, they're just not thinking clearly when they're stressed. And yeah. we really, like, we just, if if NA wants to improve, guys, like, we cannot keep sending the same people over. Even if they keep winning in our league, right. we have to do something about that. Like, we have to either be better than them and not let them win the league, not let them go internationally. Or we just got to boot him because, like, we can't have our best – What he's, like, our second best support player throughout if you yeah. took out the year consensus. And he was terrible. And he's been terrible for years. I don't know. I mean I, – I, It's I, like I how many chances Sven. do you get? No, it's like how many chances do you, should you get, do you get? But it's – that's the hard thing is that we're willing to settle for the domestic wins because it's brand recognition. It makes money for the org. It's, yeah. you know – winning winning speaks whether it's domestically or internationally and that's kind of the the problem because i know either you boot him out or some other team has to beat him and cloud nine right now still has a hold domestically uh you know and just winning so that's kind of the issue but um you know i and i agree like i don't know if they change up the roster i hope maybe they shake things up because obviously it's not working internationally Uh, maybe you keep a core piece and you know uh I don't know. I'd still like to see Berserker stay. Uh, he had know, a bad I'd... tournament, but I, I agree. I would like him yeah. to stay as well. I think. I think. I mean, I Berserker, think. I, yeah. No, you're you right. Gotta yeah, a, think, you gotta give him a chance. You gotta he, give he him a chance. He was our best AD carry for like ninety percent of yeah. the year. So and he's still I think a, young. He is. I think he did have a very bad tournament. He played really yeah. poorly in some very key moments. I think, especially in the Fnatic series, literally so many moments where he should have been flashing forward earlier, mm-hmm. getting kills earlier. There was moments for him to win a team fight by himself. He didn't take the chance fast enough, and he would just die. Kind of accomplished nothing in the fight. Uh, yeah. And there was lots of times where Berserker got first big Zaya and was fed and got farmed and got kills and stuff, uh, but he couldn't perform. And I, I think that that is unfortunate that it happened this year amongst everything because yeah. um, it was really just so close. They could have honestly kept going uh, with just yeah. a little bit better play. But... Yeah, I think you keep Berserker. Um, I think, I mean, I don't know if you get like get rid of Blabber. Like that seems like a crazy. Not, he has yeah, so much domestic it's, success, right? I would still keep Blabber. I mean, like, you just hope Blabber, that he gets a over the mental block. Uh, yeah, yeah, get him a, a sports psych, <laughs> sports psychologist. I mean, Faker sees a he does see Faker sees a sports psychologist. I think uh, I think people in NA do too, but yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, um, it should. So it's something. Yeah. It's got to be something. To, but I, I, I agree. He's your franchise player. You don't give up on him. But I think the other three, maybe time to, I'm to maybe. Down. Uh, okay, I'm not even. I'm down for the other three and Mithy. Okay, so, so this is just a personal yeah, opinion yeah. from like watching these players for years and listening to interviews, listening to other players talk about them. Zed and Mithy to me are like extremely stubborn seeming types of people that have been in the scene. Like, I really feel the stubbornness 
like when I try to interpret a draft and like the decisions that they go to make, to why they pick the champion, why they ban, I feel like the way they like Sven and Mithy have always done it is super stubborn. Like I don't feel like they think of the drafts that dynamically. Like mm-hmm. they just go down the list of what the meta stuff is, and they go down what their top three, top four champions is, and they just they just pick it. And yeah. I'm like, I feel like you guys got to look at team comp, and then you guys got to like play for your team comp, you know? Yeah. Because uh, you know these. Sven and Mithy have been on C9 for like years, and Long then time. they've been with Blabber and with Berserker and Fudge for like a year and a half. Like yeah. they've been in the system for a long ass time. Uh, I think they've been with Fudge for two and a half years. So this these core people have been around with each other for a long time. They got really yeah. cocky. They got really complacent, and they got they're stubborn with their ideas. They think they they know what's good, and then they don't change and adapt as the tournament goes on. It's the same thing as last year, kind of. I don't know. I This is one of our best teams. This team was supposed to win this title this year, and mm-hmm. they didn't because Energy came out with a 30% win rate in scrims and just beat them anyways. Like, yep. what's the point? You know, what's the point? Yeah. You know, I feel like G2, you can see a lot of similarities in that. Like, yeah, you win all these scrims. Yeah, but you have all these weird meta, like, draft ideas you get super stubborn on. Didn't work anyways. Doesn't so. work out. Yeah. Well, yeah. that does it for C9. RIP. We'll have to see if Bye. roster changes are in store. Please give uh, me some good roster changes. I'm just, yeah, I want to scrap I'd like so to much see of that things. roster. I yeah, I would like to see the things coaching change. staff too. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about some of the other matches. So let's, I guess let's, let's go through uh, the winner's bracket first. I guess the ones that made it through through the first time it was uh, Here, LMG beat KT and then T1 beat BLG. Uh, which right. series you want to talk about first? I'll, uh, I'll leave it in your, your hands. I will go. The T1 versus BLG series was a complete mega giga stomp. We kind of already yeah. talked about it with the Sendy TK was probably the most interesting mm, part yeah. of those series. Um, I do think that. BLG was also sick. That was that was, they that was tweeted out, and, okay. and I believe that one because BLG is actually a very good team, and they looked like really bad. I mean, they are a good team. Yeah, they are a very good team. Jun Shun, right? Okay, so BLG mm-hmm. went like 15-1 the regular season in LPL after having a great MSI performance, right? And yeah, they ended up losing to the second seed LG, but Jun was a part of that, being a very good player. You can't tell me that Nidalee was like. A good idea ever nobody in their right mind thinks that you play nidalee there yeah terrible idea and then when you do play nidalee you miss spears on stun targets okay i'm not gonna say that, <laughs> that is the kind of player jun is okay jun is a yeah. good player he's just sometimes inconsistent he had a bad day he was probably sick i you, you don't you know i cannot expect i'm not gonna say jun is just gonna start missing spears on stun targets from the net from right. now on you know so i buy into them being sick um so. Yeah, because you you also have to be very on. That's one thing I've noticed about you know uh, when we when Western teams play a lot of the Chinese teams or Koreans teams like you make a mistake and it's gonna cost you. Like they yeah. really punish for the mistakes. Well, and even a miss spear, you know, I think he missed a spear, but they still got a kill on the bot lane uh, early that, on. That, and yeah, it so it's though. like you can mess up and stuff like that, and and maybe it works out, but you can't. There's no room, no margin for error. Uh, when you're playing someone like, you know, like T1. But I, I do agree with your, uh, you know, an analysis of their draft. Again, like uh, just highlighting the Tom Kench, because even in the second game when they played it with Jinx, it was the same kind of thing. You got a hyper carry there where, you know, you could just get eaten if 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 it doesn't work out. But Jinx was able to get kills or find kills early in the fights and just go yeah. berserk, you know, and, and keep on snowballing. I mean, that was a crazy scoreline for for Gumi Yusi with the Jinx, but yeah, I mean, I really liked, liked how they drafted and I thought they played, they played pretty well, but uh, what, I, what are your other thoughts? I mean, I think T1 played like just insanely well, like they did everything mm-hmm. correctly, but I don't think they were challenged. I think BLG, honestly, they had a terrible draft too. Cause like, yeah. if you know, Tom Kench is allowed to be played, like they were doing early rotation Vi and Syndra. It's like you just lose to TK, like, on yeah. the spot almost, you know? Um, so that's exactly what happened. The, also, it's like the early pick, uh, Zaya, is being countered by Jinx now, right? So mm-hmm. we got we got a lot of early, like, if you first pick Zaya, you can get Rum- Rumble, J Ford into a Jinx bot lane, and then, like, you just, you you have a losing bot lane matchup, and you have just tons of people just can jump on you. So I think T1 played the draft perfectly, and they executed the games, like, almost perfectly. But to be honest, BLG did not put up a good fight. I think they had bad drafts also in their G2 series as well. Like, I think 
was it Tabe? Like Tabe got paid off or something. Like he's their <laughs> coach. Like that dude got PayPal to the moon. That dude was also sick or something. I don't know. Yeah. He had some illegal drafts. Um, I, I've watched a lot of the costumes too. So I hear both Cadrill and Yankos and Perks and Doublelift all talk about the draft in live. Uh-huh. And yeah, they all kind of come to the same conclusions as I do. So it is pretty interesting how badly I think DLG looked in their last uh, two days of the yeah. group stage. So, I mean, know? I guess it does. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that has credible um, merit when it could be a sickness thing. Cause you're right. Yeah. They, they are a, they are a top team. They are a good, good yeah, team. Very, very good. Um, yeah. They and even be, if I mean. they had, yeah. And even if they had lost and it was close or even if these two O games look like it was close. Okay. The, but yeah, they did, they did look uncharacteristically bad. So yeah. we'll chalk it up to that. And uh, you know, they still have a chance. So it, it's, it's fine. But um and, let, and let's move on because we'll talk more about them in in the you know predictions and stuff like that let, uh, let's yeah, go to yeah. kt and, and lng uh you know what are your thoughts about it? this this did go two to one in lng's favor uh but what are yeah what are your thoughts on that matchup um i think uh, it was pretty fun i think kt is unexpectedly it's still unexpectedly better team they are yeah, i i, I, I know so. they're not like the greatest team and they have had literally the hardest run possible i think they played yeah, like they only top uh, asian teams they haven't played a single western team and then they had to play lg they had to play don Juan, and then now they're playing jdg right they just had the hardest route possible and <laughs> if they get knocked out by jdg they you can actually just say yeah unlucky bro like yeah. they there's definitely a world where this team if they get a different draw, they make it to finals, maybe semifinals for sure, but maybe finals. But no, they draw JDG right in the quarters, and you either beat the favorites or you're out immediately. So, I think it's, I think KT is was is always punching up against these like upper uh, Asian teams like LNG. LNG did feel like the better team that was taking things a bit slow, and that's why I think it went to game three and. Mm-hmm. Um, in game three, it was actually a little KT favorite for a while. But I think once LNG started taking things seriously, like, it was just all business. I don't think KT really stood a chance against LG. Yeah. I mean, pretty, pretty if, short story, if, honestly. If KT, if KT won the whole thing, would you say this would be the hardest run to get uh, a win in Worlds? I'd, probably. I mean, considering, <laughs> like, it's... Like, what a story that would be, though. It would be a story. Like... I think the only comparable this would be on DRX levels, except DRX like they got That's a true. they got the normal group stage right. KT right, had right. like the new extra hard group stage yeah, version. So groups, yeah, if KT won Worlds, I do think it would be more impressive than DRX's actually. Yeah, just because the group stage is so much harder. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean. I don't think okay. KT is winning world. I don't think anybody's beating <laughs> JDG, but I mean, if Dude, it happens, they look good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it happened, I would, I would like that. That would be funny. That would be really yeah. funny. Um, uh, LNG, very impressive though. I think they're very, they very are very good. good. Team. Super good. Okay. Um, but before we get to the, the prediction stage, did you want to talk about any of the like kind of loser brackets? So it was KT versus uh, DK. BLG beating G2 and then Weibo beating Fanatic. Did you want to talk about any of those series? Yeah, kind of yeah. I, I actually ahead. wanted – honestly, I wanted to talk about G2 more. I, I yeah, let's do it. A little bit. Yeah, okay, let's poop so, on them. I'm with it. <laughs> I, I, Okay, so I'm going to poop on them, but I'm also going to praise them. I do think okay. that there's like a bit of a problem of being a top team in a shitty region, right? Mm. I do kind of think EU and NA, besides our top teams, were – pretty bad i think both na and EU were one region teams essentially so right. i think energy <clears throat> was honestly just more creative and better and that's why they were to beat g2 g2 mm-hmm. was very clearly the best in the eu and had these like combos like kogma brahm and stuff like that uh that they cooked up that only worked because they were so much better than everybody else in the eu they did not work ever against mm-hmm. like the top teams. Like like you know when BDS they pick Garrett and stuff. It works in EU, right? And sometimes you can cheese some other people with it, right? Like like Golden Guardians, but it doesn't work against good teams. It doesn't actually yeah. work against good players. And I think that's exactly what happened to G two. Like G two tried to play BLG with this Kogma Brom stuff, right? Like they did pull out the Lissandra support, and yeah, it, they, they did. did win that game. But that was not a clean game. That was not an easy game. That was like BLG like through ten times also like G two and BLG were just throwing it back and forth with each other, um, so 
But yeah, I mean, I think just G2 was just one of those teams that was just hyped up beyond all reason, and they like bought into their own hype and stuff. Um, yeah. Because like I, I really do think a lot of their drafts were just super bad. And then I gotta say, Hansama, you you used to play in NA. I I think he's bad. I'm sorry. Ooh. I think I think he's a choker. I think I don't think it like I I it, if okay. If you have a bad champion pool, I think there's a lot of roles where sometimes it's salvageable. Like in top lane, if you have a bad champion pool, right. it can be pretty bad, but you can get away with playing like the same three or four champions for a really long time. And you yeah. can just pick tanks a lot, right? Yeah. Mid laners, tanks. Yeah. You can pick like a large variety of mages and make it work. I think in ADC, yep. though, all the ADCs are so similar. I don't understand how you can not be play meta ADCs. He could yeah. not play a meta ADCs. That is just you. You're fired. You're disqualified. Like, bro, yeah. you, that's not allowed. You know? Do you know how much flame double have got because you couldn't play Senna? Yeah. Like, that's just true. You, you, your ADCs are all very similar champions. There's not a lot of them. They all kind of rotate. I, I am very disappointed in, um, in Hansama. Honestly, I'm mm. like, it. He. You, you were the top team all year long. You had so much extra time to practice. You had so much, uh, like so many t- games to play on stage to also test things out. And yeah. yet Hansama still couldn't play so many different champions. Like he never picked up Zeri. We never see him on Tristana, True. right? Yeah. We only right. see him like on Kaisa, and his Zaya was super mediocre, right? I do think his Kaisa is good, but dude, the builds, the builds, man, I can't with these builds. <laughs> Ginsu Stormraiser has got to be the worst build I've ever seen in my life. That does no damage. It doesn't even make sense as a build. They don't synergize with each other. You know? <laughs> like, I don't really get why people are building that. Ruler yeah. is the one who builds it. He's the one who started it. He's baited everybody. It's not a good. He stopped building it. Um, why, 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 though? Okay, so I know you don't think it's the optimal build, but... Why then? There's got to be. What's their thought you your, then behind it? It gets your evolutions really easily. Evolutions. That's what it gets you your evolutions like really early and easily. But the thing is, is like Stormraiser is not an on hit item. Mm-hmm. Ginsu's. It's an on hit. <laughs> yeah, you you have to do on hit damage. I don't. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy math. Like it doesn't matter if your evolutions are better if you just don't do damage, right? Right. I I just think I don't know. I ruler does the builds and he lost with it and then immediately went Navori the next game. So I uh-huh. think ruler even knows it's a bad build. He just he baited people. Fun. He did. He Dude, baited everybody him. like double lift is every time the build pops up. Double is watching is like. Yeah, this doesn't do damage. I'm, we're watching it live. <laughs> this is not doing damage. Yeah. Like, there was a point in the game where it was game two, right? G2 versus BLG. Uh, it was super close. Like, like he, Hansama has Ginsu, Stormraiser, Nashers, and he starts building Zonias. And, and it's just like, dude, you yeah. still don't do damage. And then it, it, it I, I don't know. I was really thought if he had just sold Ginsu's for like Ludens or whatever and went the normal mm-hmm. AP build. He would have done more damage. I yeah, I don't know. Hansama, well, he, he's just got a small champion pool and he's got weird build ideas. Like, oh, it, he in game three he did go Navori Kaisa. Yeah, yeah but he, he bought did. a pickaxe and then he sold it because he realized it didn't build into Navori. He sold <laughs> it like, dude, the guy is just high, man. Like, <laughs> oh no. So yeah. there's, there's so many problems that I had with Hansam in this tournament. This guy is a long term veteran. This guy's been playing the game for a long time. And he was hyped to the moon he was. this year. So Well, like, he had one good performance at Worlds, right? So yeah, I mean, two years when that ago. happens, yeah, it's two years. Or so when that happens, of course, there's a lot of stock, but that's the thing, man. Like, one performance means squad. It's consistency and longevity, I think, that make you know make make you a thing, right? Yeah. Um, and so, regardless of he's not known internationally, but he'll still be you know pretty good, I guess, regionally. Same with Blabber and it's all true. that stuff, because the longevity and consistency in the region, at least, is still there. But internationally, we can't say that he's a trustworthy player, you know, or consistent, yeah. like, oh, yeah, he's he's great on the international stage. I no. do not trust him internationally. No, I don't. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I do agree, it is difficult for the Western teams. You have to build a team that wins domestically to actually get you to the international play. But mm-hmm. then 
you know, you have to also try and improve your record internationally too, which is very hard to do, right? Because you're stuck with the same players who can win domestically but can't win internationally. And you just have to take a risk. I think going into next year, right, with the success of Energy, I mean, this is going to be a dramatic thing I'm about to say right now. Energy saved LCS, like 100%. We won with a, a domestic top side, domestic soul laners and I domestic know. jungler. You're right. Yeah. North America. Like that just doesn't happen, period. When all of our best teams, 2019 Team Liquid, we had import mm-hmm. solo laners. 2018 uh, C9, we had Licorice in top lane, which is also like one good guy. But then Jensen mid lane, right? Like we don't have mm-hmm. usually performing solo laners that are not imports. So You're right. The fact that that can finally happen, it means that maybe we can start to like shed, we can start to take more risks <gasps> and shed the players that we always yeah. play with. Yeah. See, even your dog agrees. Like, hundred percent. Yes. We He's should crying. get rid of. I mean, we can get rid of Han Sama. We can get rid of Zven and Mithy. Like, yeah. get rid of some of these players that have been here for so so long. <laughs> Don't let them win domestically. Give other players a chance to win domestically and play more games and get to international. So that yeah. we can do something like this. Like, clearly, I don't think it's like Palafox contracts and Dokla were like, I don't know. There's not like, it's not like these are guys the only guys, right? I think we could have right. done this with some other players in some previous years before. We just what never you, tried it. What do you it. think about, I'm going a little off topic here, so we won't spend too much time on it. But I'm just thinking about, you know, what you were mentioning is that it is hard because... You know, these Asian teams, I also think why they're they're so much better is because they get to play each other regularly, right? Like, yeah, so when you sure. play better competition, uh, you're tested more. Like, good competition raises the level of everyone. And Eastern and Western, or Western teams, like you said, we have our top two teams maybe, you know, in those, in those regions that are just clearly better than everyone else. It doesn't help them actually get better because uh they're they're playing teams that are just at a lower level than them and i i just wish there was some kind of like you know how we have that break between like you know whatever uh between the the summer split and then worlds like i wish there was a, a way that we could do like a higher uh impact scrim where you're actually playing teams maybe it doesn't count for each other but you just get a lot of reps in like it's it's actually to play and win for something but it's not at the caliber of worlds just i wish there was a way that because scrims aren't also a good way to practice like it just is not a good way because nobody really tries in scrims so you're not like we've seen it we saw it here scrim results don't matter right Uh, it's not indicative of any kind of skill level but i mean it just sounds like we just need more tournaments like we just gotta move to i think that's what it is three turn yeah because if exactly. we do move to three tournaments a year, we're literally spending more time just playing against better right. teams. Like we will improve over time. I would love um, that because yeah. even then it would make the rest of our regions better because it would trickle down. You know, those teams would, would learn something fun, internationally. Man. And, yeah. It would be hella fun. I, also, I'm pretty sure like, I mean, viewership and money and stuff and NA is rough or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like massive in Korea and China. If we had another tournament yeah. just to watch Korea beat China or China beat Korea or another civil war like people would watch a third yeah, one of that watching. right like where do you yeah. know how this year is gonna end right it's gonna be jdg versus somebody in the finals another yeah. korean team or asian team like just have a third one i mean it's right. always fun <laughs> it's always great right. i'm okay with it like hey and honestly more chances for an upset right yeah, like more true. chances like yeah. if we play more than one one or two tournaments a year if we have three I'm not saying it'll happen, but it gives us more of a chance to maybe I, upset somebody. I, these numbers are going to be wrong. This is going to be exaggeration, but I'm pretty sure energy like beating G2 in that series like actually is going to raise our viewership up on average for next year, just in total. Like I think we're just going to have more viewers next yeah. year because of that. Like it's yeah. winning does a lot. Winning's great sure for does. money and and like you said, with it being a lot of domestic players, like actual NA players. You know, that's yeah. good. It should it should make NA proud. Like, hey, yeah. look, we can do it. Like, it might actually foster some belief in us, you know, because hey, I think I mean, all it, of us, know. you know, we don't really believe it when, when we get in the worlds. Yeah. We're like, all right, who's going to last the longest is usually the, yeah. the, cl- the claim. But, hey, if we actually believe the we can best do something. the best in the losses. But no, we actually ended up winning. Yeah. I mean, this exactly. was just like the this was just like the perfect cherry on top of like a great year for NA talent in general i think a lot of the yeah. end of lcs was talking about how like you know we had some great 
uh, NA mids, Jojo, Insanity, yeah. and Palafox, and APA were all stepping up and doing interesting things, right? Like, we sent APA mm -hmm. and Palafox to Worlds this year. Um, yeah, I mean, APA didn't play great, but he made it here, like, over a lot of really talented players, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I think it, this is just the greatest cherry on top for, for, uh, for, um, NA and then a mids. Yeah. Uh, and then for G2, I, we were talking about G2. We just got totally yeah, we just got to, in yeah. a different dimension of conversation. But for G2, I definitely think Broken Blade had... I, I wouldn't be surprised if Broken Blade was sick or something because he... Um, the last time he was at Worlds on TSM... I mean, he was a bit on Worlds before, but uh, he went to Worlds on TSM a few years ago, right? With Doublelift. And that's when they went 0-6. It was mm -hmm. also during that same year where Broken Blade got really sick and all of TSM were like were to be in quarantine stuff. They had to stay in their room. Mm -hmm. And like Doublelift like talked a lot about how like they got super depressed because they couldn't leave their room, couldn't leave their house, yeah. couldn't talk to anybody. Kept getting sick. I think Broken Blade might just like have a hard time like acclimating to these new stressful environments because be. he was so good for so much of this year. And to have him just like do a bunch of uncharacteristic, really bad stuff is like it's the nerves or it's like not prepared sort of for international yeah. travel and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Cause, uh, the G2 coaches and stuff, uh, they also said the general manager said that like, they like control G2 members sleep schedules and like what mm -hmm. their diets, what they eat. Like they're on like the real athlete regimen. Right. But it still wasn't enough. They're still getting sick. Right. They're still clearly not disciplined. They scrimmed a ton, right. Had great scrim records. Didn't matter. So, this is tough. I, I do think some for some players, it's just pressure. They just cannot hang with it. And then we have to find those players that are just okay with it. Clearly, energy just plays with zero pressure, no expectations, lose every scrim, and then they play fine, you know? so. Well, I think that's actually to their advantage because people yeah. always underestimate them, you know, myself included. It's like, hey, we're supposed to lose. Like, it's, on the, it's the pressure on the other team that ha they're supposed to beat us. Yeah. So we'll just go I, out and play. We'll just do our I mean, thing. I genuinely think, like, even seeing their amazing series against G2, just knowing about their scrim record in the back of my mind and, like, knowing the kind of players there are, I, they're going to get pooped up by Waymo probably. But, yeah. you know, that's the only way to go with it. Just no expectations. Yeah, maybe they just Get lean into free. that and say, "That's that's what I'm saying." Maybe they lean into that in the in this next in the quarterfinals. Just hey, look, yeah. we're not supposed to win, so let's go out there, have fun, and you know, see what happens. You never just, know, right? I mean, yeah, I I think whenever like G two builds up their own expectations, the whole community builds up yeah. their expectations. It that puts pressure. It puts pr it goes to their head. It does literally affect how they play. I think it yeah. affects their hands and their brains. So, yeah. goddamn, you know. All right. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. let's let's go ahead and predict these quarterfinals. First of all, I know who do you? you we probably said this before, but I know you said JDG versus somebody in the finals. Who do you do you think JDG is winning the whole thing? It's hard to say. It. I mean, it's really hard to not say so. I mean, mm -hmm. I I didn't. I wasn't last year. I didn't predict DRX was going to win until they had their first series against EDG. I think I'll have a much clearer understanding after this. I think I can yeah, make a really good yeah. educated guess after okay. the first round of quarterfinals. But as That's of fair. this moment, I think it's just JDG. It's really hard to not see it as JDG. They're just too okay. good. Let me let me ask you let me ask you this besides NRG of course, but yeah, uh, who do you want NRG. to win? Who do who do you want to win worlds? Do I want to win worlds? Yeah, I know yeah. what you're getting at this. I know who you who you want to say. Who do you think I want? Who do you think this, I'm going to say? T1. <laughs> <laughs> Am I that predictable? Yeah, Jeez. you're so predictable. You're biased as hell, bro. <laughs> you, know, you know I am, man. You know I'm always going for the old guy, Faker, you know, who's yeah. not even old. I'm just saying. I, I want him to win, dang it. Yeah, what about I, you? All right, who do you want to win? I mean, I would like him to win, too. I, okay. I think... T1 is interesting in that they are actually <laughs> underdogs this tournament in right. a sense too. Last year they were the favorites, I think. Yeah. Uh, this year they are legitimately underdogs, as in like yeah. they could not have that pressure on them and actually perform like the thing we were just talking about. Right. That could actually happen too. T1. I don't think mm -hmm. anybody expects T1 to beat Genji or um or JDG. They're playing against LNG, right? So. Yeah. We'll go in our predictions. I have no clue. 
like going into this match, LNG versus T1, that is yeah. a hard one to predict. Yeah, let's like, stay there. Uh, like, oh, yeah, so I know you, you're not. Okay, you know, well, but let, uh, let's stay there. <laughs> I don't freaking know. I mean, both teams are very good. Cool. Uh, both teams can play a wide variety of champions, it seems like. Um, both teams have some big no no picks you can't give them, right? So, like, you can't give uh, Rumble over for sure to mm-hmm. Zeus, and you really can't. You gotta worry about the Senna TK wrinkle in the bot lane for T1. Um, so I think more gonna... the TK because yeah, again they okay. show they can play it with Jinx or other, you know, other. Uh, I mean, ADCs, I mean, T1 so. is the team that has shown the most understanding of the Zaya Kaisa meta. So if you pick Kaisa Senna TK, you're not happy, right? I think if you also pick Kaisa, they're willing to do stuff like uh, Ash Renata or Ash mm-hmm, Milio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Milio is a pick. That we should look out for. I think it's super broken. I think a lot of teams have missed out on picking Melio. Mm. Uh, in fact, little little self self pat in the back. I was saying in the last. <laughs> no, episode, you never whatever. do that. Uh, yeah, 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 whatever, <laughs> whatever. I was saying, <laughs> I was saying on the last episode at the end of the podcast uh-huh. that uh, teams should consider more range supports. And boom, look what happened. We got a lot more range supports. We got Renata mm-hmm. and Melio showing up. I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up actually getting some Lulu. Lulu can do like a pseudo Tom Kench kind of thing, but way stronger at like hyper carrying, like buffing up a like a Kogma. Right. Like, dude, what if they just went Kogma Lulu, right? Instead of Kogma Brahm yeah. for G2. Tried and true. Yep. Stupid and G2. Dumb. Anyways, and like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think Kaisa and Zaya are going to be like they're first picked in almost every draft for most of this world. I think they're going to start to fall. I think ADC yeah. pick is going to fall down a bit more. I see that. Yeah. I think there's also a really weird world where I don't think we're going to go where we should see a ton of Caitlyn for some reason. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause we did start to see it come up. And if Caitlyn is like early picked, then I don't know. Caitlyn can do a lot of like really messed up stuff to like how teams per- perceive how drafts work out. Uh, you, you'll start to not really see Kaisa or Zaya really pop up everywhere. You'll see Ash and Jinx everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, T1 is interesting. LNG is also interesting because they're doing the Wukong thing. I think Wukong has been nerfed so many times and is still yeah, just, was, I guess, yeah. broken in mm-hmm. the jungle. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. So okay. um, LNG's got a lot of interesting things for them too. I, I think LNG was just not pushed as much. So I don't know how much how many thoughts I have of them. I mean, they had their, they had their crazy draft where they played like a Kali and like a bunch of assassins against JDG and one. So I think Elgin could do anything. Um, God, I don't know who to, I don't know who to predict. I, this is like one of the weirdest, toughest matchups is I'm cool. It's cool. It's happening. I'm it so is, glad yeah. it's happening. It's fun. I have no idea. I'll give you, I'll give you three seconds to think about it. Cause T one three zero baby. T one three zero. Okay. That's I my, can, I that's can my see connection. that. Oh, I have to think. It's based okay. on no analysis, though. It's based yeah, on no analysis. You know me. I this know. is what I think, happens. I think Zeus is going to have a good time into Zika. I think I think uh, the Nar pick is really good for Zeus for a lot of matchups for Zika. Dude, I think Tarzan's going to probably have a really good time against owner. Yeah. Um, that's a team thing. Scout. I mean, Scout and Faker. These guys used to be on the same team. Like these guys, That's true. Scout used to play under Faker on yeah. on SKT like six seven years ago. Uh, I don't know. And then the bot lanes, dude. Gala is so nuts, but so is Gumiushi. Like so is Guma. It's gonna be a good. fun match, man. It's, it's gonna be a fun, be a fun match. Uh, I'm gonna go T1. I'm gonna go T1. Yeah. I'm, gonna go t- I'm gonna go T1 three three two three two. All right, three two. I think it's okay. gonna be. I think it's going to probably look pretty good for T1, and they're going to let it slip. They're going to let it drop a little bit, and then they'll bring it back in the end, I think, game five. We'll see, though. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. This is going to be a fun one. It's This is it one is of the coolest. I think this is one of the coolest matchups that we've ever gotten, and just like not in like a hype way, just like an interesting, like unexpected. We haven't really thought of this matchup before. But it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's a really cool. It one. is a pretty good. It's a pretty interesting matchup. Well, yeah. um, I don't know if this one's going to be as interesting, but in the same bracket, JDG versus KT, we already talked yeah. about KT's uh, most difficult run ever, and now they're up against the probable favorites of Worlds in JDG. Yep. Do you think KT has a chance here? I mean, probably. I'm With what you said, I'm guessing no. Uh, I mean, realistically, no. 
But I do think KT has a bit of that factor of people don't believe in them, they have no pressure, mm-hmm. and they do play a lot better. Um, I also think KT is a very crafty, intelligent team. I think in the moments, they make a lot of goofy mistakes sometimes, but in their preparation, I think it shows in their drafts and like some of their early game plans that they have very clean macro. I think they can... They can be impressive looking against JDG. I think that they will at least take a game. I think it'll be three one JDG, and but I do think KT will look impressive in it. Like I think KT will leave this tournament having the hardest run, losing to the eventual winners, and people will, can look back at it and be like, "That was a pretty good run." By yeah, them. pretty good. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, even though they went out in quarterfinals, that I think they'll play well against JDG. They're a very clever team. I think they're a very smart team. They're just a bit slow, and they just don't have as high-quality players. But mm-hmm. I think they're very smart. Uh, they have good macro. They have good game plans. They just kind of choke <laughs> in yeah. important moments a lot of times. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I tough. Like well, I mean, I mean, it could be – I mean, even if it is a 3-1, like, you know, it, it could look close. And that's yeah. that's really – because the score line – or the yeah, the score line doesn't always tell the whole story. Uh, no. You know, it could be a – it could also look like a three one stomp, you know, so um yeah. hopefully hopefully they I will say maybe the thing going for them is because through this difficult run, the fact that they've made it this far, again, that's getting more, like I said, better competition, yep. more more reps in, you're getting warmed up, you're you're playing at a high level to get to this point. Maybe that helps them in this, you know, in their favor now having to go against probably the highest level than JDG. Yep. Um so Maybe it has prepared them for such a time as this. So we'll have to see. I think I, me, I yeah. still think JDG is going to win. Um, yep. I don't know that. I'm just going to say 3-1, three, three, I guess. But I, I really yeah. don't know the score line. Yeah. I, I think most people would say 3-0. I'm saying 3-1 because I do think KT will surprise. Right, but, yeah. Uh, I think I, I, it's not out of this world we get a 3-2, though. I don't, I don't think it's out of this yeah. world. I think KT – is going to surprise people by how good they are. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Uh, and I, now the more that I'm talking about their difficult run, the more I'm believing in my own yeah. stuff. So <laughs> the more uh, I'm yeah. believing in my own analysis. Okay. I mean, uh. they, they had a, con- <laughs> they had a convincing win against Dan one and Dan one. Yeah. I mean, well, Dan one did kind of pull it back too. I feel like Dan one really uh-huh. tried to make that Dan one magic work at the end, but KT, I feel like they have a bit of that, like, you know, if they have a winning draft and a winning comp, I feel like they just don't lose. You know, they do understand drafts and comps well, and they play to the win conditions. I think as a team, I think so, that's the that's the key. Yeah. What you said, they play the, they play their comps really well. That that is one yeah. thing I noticed. Like the execution, and they know how to execute that comp. Yeah. Um, that that says a big thing. And uh, while I'm saying on that, that is one thing I noticed a big difference between the Western and Eastern teams is the understanding of their comps their win condition and how to actually play because when i see some of the how how they execute their team comps even to the point where it's boring because sometimes especially against two korean teams like they'll give up objectives because they know that it's not time yet like they're not at their power spikes they're not at their their and it's like sometimes it's boring because you're like come on fight but at the same time they just know they're like no this is not the time and then they know when to do it they know how to execute it, what kind of pick they're looking for. And uh, all of that to say is that was a big thing that I noticed between the better teams, um, usually the Asian teams and, and, and the Western teams, is the understanding and execution yeah. of their comps. And I think it's- something that makes that like way easier, too, to make those choices is you pick scaling in your draft. I think that's yeah. just a trap that Western teams fall for is that not only do they not pick scaling, so that they have less options, but they don't even play their options. Like They pick right. such hard early game. And then you don't dominate the early game, and you right. try to go for five v five team fights. It's like not only do you not understand your comp, but you also picked a shitty comp and that you can't scale. Yeah. And I just feel like Korean teams never fall for that trap. I mean, sometimes it's bad, right? I feel like sometimes it can be punished and it doesn't, but it's always solid, right? It's always a yeah. good idea to go for a scaling draft with CC and stuff like that and good five. But sometimes, and then sometimes I think they over index though. Like Western teams will, okay, we want to go scaling, but they go all losing lanes. Yeah, they go, they, yeah, like yeah, a jungler yeah, yeah. that yeah. like is supposed yeah. to carry, but has no winning lanes. So you're like, how are you supposed to get that? And then they get heavily punished and that snowballs out of control and they just don't. Yeah. I, I think so the it, classic yeah. is like doing something like a Zier Zaya and then not playing 
the game for like 30 minutes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly so yeah i can i can agree with that for sure yeah, yeah. Um, okay yeah. uh anything else did you want to say anything else before nope i mean okay. good luck kt <laughs> JDG, you know, you know, it's you're JDG. battle tested. <laughs> yep. You're battle yep. tested. All right, uh, let's go to Gen Gen G versus BLG. I like this matchup. Also, also an interesting one. Uh, we'll see, I good. mean, the caveat here is that I really hope BLG is like not sick when they yeah, play. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because last time this happened, Gen G was considered hard favorites, and then BLG three zeroed them at MSI. Mm-hmm. So this is one where it has the chance to be a very interesting match. Um, I mean, dude, BLG is just... There's just some teams there in the world where they look so garbage against teams that are bad. Like, BLG went from, like, losing to Golden Guardians in a game to mm-hmm. just 3 0 Gen Genji, 3 one T1, right? And then going 0-3 against JDG. Like, BLG is just not an easy team to understand. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think Genji is very easy to understand. They are very predictable. They play the same way. Their skill yeah. level is very high, but very consistent. If you can't reach that bar, you will never ever take a game off Genji. But if you can't mm-hmm. reach that bar, Genji, the crack starts to shot like show. Yeah. Uh, Genji can get a little monkeyish. So I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. This is super is hard to predict. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I think it's I think it's interesting because well I'm just saying like you know Chovy is always kind of he's again another really good talent who I think has yet to really reach his full potential internationally so this will be a big test uh, because can he make it out 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 past quarterfinals you know so this is a tough matchup this is not going to be easy Um, and I think that's what we're waiting to see so this is the I think the barometer test of have you gotten past the hurdle have you gotten past the hump where we can now say, Oh, you're a great international player. Um, no, so no. I don't know. I, I, because I do, I actually think if I was barring any sickness, I think BLG is, is the team I favor more, you know, maybe a three, two, but again, yeah. this could be the time where Gen G show it. And they're like, yeah, yeah. you know, we're, we're going on. So Gen-G, I'm going to just yeah. predict, I'm going to predict BLG. I don't think it's time. I don't okay. think it's time for Chovy. You don't think it's time? No. I, I do. I do. I don't know. I think it's, uh, I, I think it's time. Is it time? Is it Fuck time? It. I don't know. I think Genji's gonna win. I okay. I don't really know why. I'm just saying it to you. I mean, you just think it's time. You're feeling it. I don't know. I mean, it's just quarters. <laughs> I okay. Yeah. BLG, okay. If I'm going off of BLG as like a year thing, like their whole year, then BLG is a lot higher. If yeah. I'm going off BLG's world performance, then they're a lot lower. Um. And I think I'm going to index a bit harder in the recent stuff, just because I think okay. they might be sick. Yeah, BLG had played really badly in their last two yeah. days. They had a really bad series against T1, and they had a really close series where they won against G2, but I thought it was really bad. I thought like their draft was terrible. They just won because they had a hands diff. I also mm-hmm. think in their hands diff, they just like weren't very coordinated. Like... They were actually super uncoordinated and had bad drafts, and they were still able to be G2, which, mm-hmm. yes, is impressive. But when you think of, but like, that's not very promising when I think of them beating a team like Gen G, right? A team like right. Gen G that is so consistent that if you cannot reach this high, high over and over again, you just don't beat them. So I'm going to go Gen G. I I think their rec- recent performance and their understanding of the meta is going to be very high. Gen G is probably not very pressured either. Just because mm. BLG doesn't look that good, I wouldn't be pressured either. But maybe that works in BLG's favor. I'm gonna go Genji. I'm gonna go three two. Honestly, they're probably um, though also wanting revenge. You know, yeah, so I'm sure, I'm sure that's I mean, in Genji their mind. Must win. Yeah, yeah. They're motivated. Revenge. You know. Yeah. So. Okay. I also think like BLG is just one of those teams that they just play at the level of their opponents, right? Like mm-hmm. they they if you suck, BLG sucks. If you're good, BLG is better. But yeah. You know, BLG doesn't win things though ever, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, I think right. uh, I think Genji's gonna win. I I don't really know. Like all these matches are super tough to predict. Like even oh, this if, one. Th- yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, no, you were about to say, go ahead. Uh, you know what I'm gonna okay, so, <laughs> Hey, the the we know this one's easy to predict. NRG versus Weibo. Weibo's three yeah. owing NRG. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, go whenever easily. Weibo. We know that Weibo's but but <laughs> okay, but in an alternate in an alternate universe, yeah. you know, 
where we're discussing this. Yeah. What's your prediction? Because <laughs> okay. we know in this one, it's definitely Weibo 3-0, right? I, so, I, you know, okay. So here's logic. my honest thoughts. Like, if we take out all superstition and we take things yeah. very seriously for a little bit yeah. and, and yeah. try to, like, actually analyze stuff, <laughs> actually I, <don't> analyze. <laughs> I do think the way energy played against G2 was very coordinated. It was very it impressive. Was. I don't think Weibo actually like contains that level of coordination. I don't think Weibo is actually as coordinated as energy, just period. The mm. problem is, is I think Weibo has like way better laning and just way better that's hands true. in a lot of ways. So that's going to be a big thing, right? It's like you ever play a game where you're just getting completely pooped on in lane, but you win the game anyways because you just like grouped or whatever. Like yeah. it's gonna be like that kind of feeling where if energy wins, it's gonna be because they just played together better and got picks and team fights and played the map, but they probably all got shafted in lane. They probably all got weird counter picks, right? So I don't really know. I, I, you know, because the mechanics bleed into the team fights and stuff. But yeah, I could see in ways where energy is just better than Weibo in a lot of facets, but Weibo is like, they have so much experience playing against really hard teams, like playing against mm -hmm. really coordinated teams. Like Weibo was losing to LNG and JDG and their domestic. They know what a really good team looks like. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Weibo should still technically win, like no matter how you really look at it. Yeah. And, and also it's like energy. They need to do things. That's just miraculous. They just need to be a miracle team. Because they their scrim results do not say they win, right? History does not say they win. The only thing that says they win is that they look they had two good games against EU. So yeah. it is very Weibo favored. I don't. Th I think if you were a rational betting man, you would bet something like Weibo three zero three one. And I think that's what I would probably. I I would fully believe that that's pretty realistic. Yeah, like we're looking yeah. like you know. <laughs> like them beating G two was like a ten percent chance of happening. Exactly. And they did it. I mean, you could hit ten percent, but so if that know. was ten percent. This is probably what five percent. I'm gonna go with like 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 two percent, two two to three, two and a half. Two, okay, yeah, three, we'll do two and a half percent. percent. Like Weibo is just way better hands. Like and here's I think my worry have, too. Yeah. Here's my worry too is that they're just gonna ban Tom Kench uh, against them every time because the surprise is no longer there. Yeah. They know what they what how you know how they can win. I'm not saying that that completely cripples them, but I yeah. think they I hope they've got another like plan up their sleeve. They they should hopefully be planning that they're not going to get Tom Kench. Yeah, uh, like, and, they, and working around that. That is the only way energy wins, right? Is if they do a like a series of unexpected things to yeah. win against Weibo. Because Weibo, wh what is what is Weibo? Okay, Weibo is good hands good at laning yeah. they they're good at playing the meta champions right they have a couple of their own pocket picks um and they have like a lot of clutch factors where like they're going to play a team fight really exceptionally well um but what do they not have right this is notorious for like middle of the pack asian teams is that they're not that creative in draft and they're not that creative at making like super weird game plans like super random level ones right like, they just don't do that stuff. They're too consistent. They're like, why do we need to do a weird level one when we just win lane anyways, right? But energy, they're really yeah. clever. They got 12 fucking coaches, you know? Like, they can do some weird shit. They got that a is lot how of we coaches. win. <laughs> yeah. Did you see when they all go up on stage? It's like, good gosh, man. It's like a whole like, I know that guy. That's another retired pro. Yeah. That's another retired yep. Yeah, it just kept going. I love it, like... man. I love it, man. Hey, I mean, well, think, so what do you yeah. think? What do you think? Uh, could we see the Seraphine bot lane? I mean... Who knows? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really have no idea. Okay. Wait, wait. Hold on. Let me think. Okay. Milio is one. I think Milio yeah. is like definitely a pick that is uh, against a lot of different champions, like uh, against Maokai, against Sejuani, against. Um, I don't know. You can even pick it against Rumble in some cases, right? To give your ADC yeah. a bit of shielding and move speed out of the ulti. Like, I think uh, there's a lot of like options there. To, like think of like OP champions that you could pick right now. I mean, you'd have to do some real goofy stuff. Like if the shy blind picks were necked maybe you just like go a Lowy or do something stupid. I don't know. Like right. you, you got to start to like get into those drafts where like this seems like a really dumb idea, but let's try it anyways. Like yeah. you got to get into that kind of mindset, right? Because yeah. 
it, they're going to have to chess move it. Like, yeah, they have to anticipate like, OK, they're going to ban this against us. So this is what we're going to do. We know like they want to play this. So we're just going to, yeah. you know, it'd be funny if they just came out with like counters and you're like, oh, like we yeah. hadn't seen this pick ever. But yeah. this specifically counters, you know, this comp or this draft. And yeah. I would love to see that. And then you never know. Surprise, yeah, surprise. You never know. I mean, like, I they think big brained up with the 12 coaches that they got. They big brained they got up. 12 coaches. You know, this, like, this is this is your only choice. This is your only option. Yeah. Like, I think because yeah. the only way you're going to out hands, you're going to you're going to like, you know, overcome mm. the difference in hands and skill is you have a draft advantage. You know, it doesn't matter how good your yeah. hands are. If he's yeah. stuck on Renekton and you're playing this Omega late game comp, your hands don't matter. You just win, right? Mm -hmm. That's League of Legends. Is, you're allowed to do that sometimes. You just win. Yeah. Because <laughs> your comp is better. So right. I think we just need to do that kind of stuff because, uh, yeah. you know, otherwise I don't think we have a chance. And then, you know, the uh, the immense team coordination. We're going to have to play really well as a team together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, do you got any final thoughts? That's all the teams predicted. Uh, any final um, things you want to... Any final talk things I wanted to talk about? I don't know. There was a lot of like people retiring and stuff, or like um, a lot of free. I don't know. Was there news? Do you know? Remember any news? Any? I haven't stuff? actually been. I I think I did see a retirement somewhere. I don't remember who, but I mean, we could talk about all that stuff. I feel like once uh, Worlds is done, we'll have an episode recapping all of the the roster moves or, or people retiring and all that good stuff. Uh, I know sure. dig laid off a bunch of people like Tomo oh, was gone yeah. and yeah. Uh, pretty much the whole roster. Jensen's yeah. Santorin retired. Yeah. Santorin um, retired so, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. could, we could do, we could catch all that stuff up. Uh, catch all that stuff later. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. yeah. And then G2 had their whole scrim thing and then we found all the weird patches. Okay. Well, um, yes, let's see. Meta? You know, Got meta? Uh, yeah, let's talk about the meta. Um, yeah. Just the world's meta. Are we still talking about that? I mean, we kind of covered yeah. the world's meta. Um, you know what I want to talk about? I want to go off topic. Let's just go off okay. topic a little bit. I want sure. to talk about um, just uh, the the main patch, the main yeah, the, the, in -game the current patch. time. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I'm so tired. I'm just saying random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say he's he's still kicking. Yeah, go I'm ahead. just I'm just I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been fun. I've been playing a lot of League. Uh, what have I been playing? I've been playing Garen. So uh, I've been playing so much Garen. I think he's in A Ram really... or Summoners. Summoners. No, Rift. Summoners Rift. Yeah, okay. I've been climbing with Garen um, with Ignite with Berserker Greaves. I actually – okay, I do go Berserker's Greaves almost every game in Stridebreaker, okay. but I don't always go Ignite Flash. Sometimes I switch it up. I'll go, like, Ghost Flash or I'll actually take TP and uh, stuff like that. Okay. And I don't always go Phaser. Sometimes I take Conqueror. Uh, I think that you got to have to – I've learned enough Garen that I know how to change my runes and masteries and shit for yeah. the right matchups and stuff. But I think Garen is legitimately broken. I don't think he's balanced. Um I think once you have such, if you have good enough lane fundamentals and you know mm -hmm. matchups well enough, you just get to a point where you play to like sustain and not lose, and you just wait for a one shot, and then you just yeah. actually can one shot people. It's pretty nuts. So, any Garrett enjoyers out there, if you want some tips, I don't know. He's he's just broken. He's really fun too. I love spinning to win. That's all. I think Garrett's very fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very fun. Very fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, holy God. I mean, what else? Is there anything else to talk about? Anything else happen? I don't even know, man. I, I think I you're, I think, do you know that you're awake right now? Or I don't know. Are we even <laughs> doing an episode? Is this a, is this a dream? That yeah. Or are we actually podcasting, Did right? Energy actually win? Or I'm oh, wake up yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, that's reality. We're keeping that as a reality. Okay. We're not yeah. dreaming that up. Okay. Uh, no, I think that, I think that's it, man. And then we'll, uh, we'll catch up later. All right. Next well, episode, um, but, uh, you know, good luck. Good, good luck. luck. NA. I think NA is playing in like less than, less than 24 hours. And like, yeah, so, sir. you know, good yeah. luck. Well, when this gets out, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I, I should, I'll try to edit as quick as possible. But uh, yeah, yeah. You edit don't forget that. to listen. You edit that quick, buddy. -o. I will get do to it, work, man. punk. I will get you. <laughs> you get some. You get some sleep, and I'm too hyped, you know. bro. I'm gonna stay up right. all day and wait for energy oh, to boy. win. <laughs> I'm never right. gonna. Well, I'm, if you're, up... I am not sleeping until energy wins worlds. Well, I might die. Let's yeah. play. Let's play Arams if you want. I'm down. Let's play some Arams. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, 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 
Mitchell's my o- Mitchell's my only uh, friend that plays uh, League with me because Alistair's too good. Like yeah. I will hold him back, yeah. and Kevin always has a five stack. He's too popular. So yeah, Kevin's too cool for us. He's like league, <laughs> he's like Kevin's cool. like league popular. It's weird. He he's is got, league popular. He's got he's a always, lot of friends. He's, he's got like, a lot dude. of friends. He's got a big Discord. He's always got people. And they all up play. play. They all play yeah. League of Legends and Valorant. And they got a whole like. They all want to. Play I mean, they're with cool, but too. yeah, they yeah. always want to play with them. Well, whatever. I mean, whatever, Kevin. I I, uh, I would like. Uh, Oh, L- XLNC, we were partnered with, right? And like, I, I yeah. like did some of their tournament stuff, dude. Kevin, he like had like three different teams in Valorant tournaments with different people. <laughs> I mean, it was him and his brother, and then yeah. they just add new people. I'm like, where do you find these people, bro? Like, I know, man. You have an endless stream of friends to just That's, play. He does, man. Teams he with? really does. <laughs> I sometimes I'll hop in their Discord and I'll just see there's always like five people playing a game or something yeah. i'm like dude okay Man, they're all anyways nice. kevin mr popular we'll see you next time maybe we can get some uh three stack aram going on sometime yep. but uh be fun. anyways that's gonna do it for us we're just rambling now because it's fun we love yep. doing this go but NA. go and a we'll see you on the next episode hey good luck on your climb try not to be too toxic and we'll see you on the next episode peace